Welcome to module five of our financial accounting course. This module is all about receivables, being owed money. You know, is a very common current asset. And to be honest with you, when I was a beginning student, I always, it was a mystery why companies had receivables at all. Because I looked at the transaction and I sort of said, well, why wouldn't I just make my customer pay cash right away, right? A typical cash customer here on the left is a very simple transaction. You debit cash, you credit whatever your revenue is, right? They make them pay you right away. Debit cash, credit sales revenue, or in this case, consulting revenue. So you've earned their money right away and there you have it. And a credit customer, it's like twice the journal entries, there's two journal entries involved, you know, one to say debit AR, credit consulting revenue, and then, you know, they pay you a month later, so you debit cash and credit AR. So uh, even a, a dream credit customer, uh, it's more work than a cash customer. And the reality of credit, and, and that's what we're going to learn in our accounting for credit, is most customers fall into this category. Most credit customers fall into the category of good credit customers. But not all customers are good credit customers. Can you guess what makes a bad credit customer? I'll give you a hint. Bad credit customers don't pay. So a big focus of our week today, or <laughs> our module, I guess I should say, is just dealing with the fact that some customers don't pay. And I'm going to kind of walk you through a bit of an example here in our video. But uh, even still, let's just assume all all customers are good. So we have our typical cash customer. They pay cash, credit consulting revenue. We have our money, so we're not chasing anybody. Credit customers, you just have to chase them. Like most of them will pay on time. Let's say 90% pay on time. 10%, they might forget. They might lose the bill. You're just, you're chasing people. There's a whole AR function like, uh, you know, at, at most big organizations, they hire accounts receivables clerks. Basically, you're a bill collector. You are collecting money and it's a pain to collect money. So it's a pain point for a lot of businesses. This, this journal entry that looks so easy in an accounting class can be very hard in reality getting paid for work you've already done, right? It just entails chasing people down and it's painful. Even when it goes well, it can be painful. Um, so I don't want us to leave the fact that there's a human cost to this and uh, that there's a real challenge, just getting paid money from people who owe you money. And that's a big feature or a big challenge of the week. But the biggest challenge for an accountant, this is the biggest challenge for an accounting function, is just getting paid by the people who owe you and most people end up paying. The biggest challenge for the accountants is dealing with those that never pay. And uh, those do happen. Again, if maybe 10% of your customers are a pain to collect from, maybe one or 2% of your customers just never pay. They might go bankrupt, they might dispute their bill, or they might just avoid the bill. They might recognize that they uh, owe, but they might try to duck you for some other reason. Uh, so scrolling down a little bit here, um, uh, not all credit customers are good. So let's go through an example of a bad credit customer and we'll kind of get into why this creates uh, drama for us in the accounting function and this will be a big focus of your week. So on December 1st, 2025, I do some consulting work and uh, earn some revenue. Of course, the person doesn't pay me right away. They are a credit customer. So debit accounts receivable from this. Let's call it, let's name them. Let's say B, C, bad customer, a thousand dollars. So, okay. Uh, I got accounts receivable coming in from bad customer and you know, I, I in good faith, I think they're going to pay me December 31st rolls around and I'm going to do financial statements because of course it's my fiscal year end. I do my balance sheet and income statement, etc financials go out on this date. Okay, so I, I do my financials. And by the way, bad customer hasn't paid me yet because, uh, well, they're not going to pay. But on December 31st, I don't know they're bad customer. I think I'm going to collect. Uh, so January 1st rolls around, they haven't paid. And let's say I give, you know, a week of leeway for checks to come in the mail and all this stuff. And on January 7th, 2026, I call them, right? I call them. And I say, hey, just letting you know your bill's overdue. And this is like normal. There's, again, 10% of my customers. I'm going to have to make this call. I'm going to have to do a little bit of chasing. And they, they say, oh, yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll get right to it. And 
you know. So I let a few weeks go by, and, you know, maybe it's January uh, 30th. I, I call them again because they, they uh, haven't uh, paid their bill. And they say, oh, you know what? Can you resend that bill? We lost it. We don't have the, in our accounting system, we need to process it through properly. And so on, again, January 30th, 2026, I call again. And um, they kind of give me a bit of a song and dance. And uh, so I send them the bill and I'm still waiting. I don't want to send them out to some collections agency and because they'll take a cut of the money. And this is pretty normal to have a bill a month overdue. In fact, I might not even call them this frequently if I were uh, really in the business. But uh, we've called them twice. So uh, I let another few weeks go by and it's February 15th 2026 I, I i try to reach out again and i get this the number you have dialed is not in service i start to think uh oh <laughs> you know so uh uh no phone right they call there's no phone to, to call and i have this person who owes me a thousand dollars and they don't have a phone anymore or they've disconnected their number or changed their number something is going wrong here uh clearly something is going wrong what to do uh well let's just say i you know i search them and i google them and i track them down on social media and on february 20th uh 2026 I reach out on social media and they say, uh, I've moved to Japan <laughs> and uh, I'm not paying your thousand dollars. Good luck getting it. And at this moment, I've got a decision to make, right? I can try to get a lawyer and try to sort of go to collections, but they're in Japan and, you know, it's very expensive. To, I don't know anything about Japanese law or how, how I would track down my money there or... I can give up. And companies do give up sometimes. And this might be the moment. Uh, so social media, they've moved to Japan and uh, they're saying they're not going to pay. So illegally they owe me, but they're not going to pay. And they even have acknowledged that. Uh, I, I might be able to get legal recourse, but a lawyer is going to be expensive and it might not be worth, you know, uh, that thousand dollars I collect, which I might not even get the money. Half of that goes to the lawyers. I might just say, I want this headache out of my life. I'm going to give up. So on February 20th, 2026, I give up. Okay, so we've got a big accounting problem here because we don't know that this debt has gone bad until February 20th, 2026. And so I'll tell you the journal entry I want to do, but I'm not allowed to do. On February 20th, 2026, I want to do, I'm going to write it in red. We're not allowed to do this. I wished we could, but we're not allowed. This is what I want to do. I want to debit bad debt expense. This is the expense related to uh, an account receivable going bad. We call it a bad debt. So it's a bad, it's a cost of AR going bad. And it's a very common thing because if you have, uh, every company has this. If you have hundreds and hundreds of people that owe you money, guess what? Some of them are going bad. So this is what I want to do. Debit bad debt expense and credit AR to say, hey, that AR from bad company uh, went bad. This is what I want to do, but I'm not allowed to do this. And the reason is there's a rule in accounting. It used to be called the matching principle. And the rule is, I'm not worried about rule names. The rule here is I need to record revenues and the expenses related to those revenues in the same period. So if I earn the revenue in fiscal 2025, I need to record the bad debt expense in 2025 before I do my financial statements. Now you might be saying to yourself, but Tony, I didn't know this was a bad debt expense until like February of 2026. How can I record a bad debt expense on December 31st, 2025 when I thought it was good? I didn't think it was bad. I had no idea it was bad. Well, the answer is, on December 31st, 2025, we guess. Uh, don't guess. No, we don't guess in accounting. We estimate. We make an educated guess. We say, well, I know I've got a 1,000 customers that owe me money, and I know 1% of these people aren't going to pay. I'm going to take a shot in the dark, and I'm going to put a number out there. Uh, we don't know which customers aren't going to pay, but we know some of them won't. So this chapter, you're going to learn 
how those estimates are made and how to account for those estimates. That's a big focus of our chapter. So we're not allowed to wait until February 2026 to give up. We actually have to guess or estimate on December 31st, 2025, and we're going to learn a new kind of adjusting entry for receivables. So it's, it's tough to be owed money. It's tough to collect money from the people who owe you. And, you know, believe me, uh, if you've ever been owed money, I bet you most of you have been owed money and you haven't been able to collect. Well, businesses are the same and it's it's a challenge for us accountants. So uh, this chapter is all about that challenge. Stay tuned for some great examples on this.